Um, okay, so I'll talk a little bit about the part of the modeling group and what we're doing in the mathematics department. Um, I didn't have time to do my whole talk, so I'll um, speed this up and kind of fly through a lot of the presentation. Um, so what we do is particle modeling, and particle modeling, you can do a wide range of problems. I'm just going to kind of show you a slice of what all the students have been able to do using particle modeling and GPU. So we'll start with something kind of simple so I can give you the idea. Okay, so these are the students that worked on it, and what we did, we just went to Walmart, got a piece of bungee cord, a couple of C-clamps, um, bought a high-speed camera, and we filmed a bungee cord going up and down. Now, you put, get in your mind what that really looks like. Okay. Now we're fixing the model. Now you can model it with partial differential equations, and when you're building this model, you're throwing out most of the stuff that makes the string really the string, and come up with equations easy enough to solve. But still solving this equation right here will take you 20 pages, and you need to be a senior math major or a graduate student to be able to handle this problem. Or what you can do is you can weigh the string and say you got a computer that can handle a thousand particles. Divide the, divide the weight of that string by a thousand, each one of the particles, boy a thousand of the string, and then you got to connect with some push pull force. In this case, we're just going to use a spring. A freshman can do this. They just need to have a fast computer to do it. Now, I'm going to model on this side over here the particles, and then we want to solve the partial difference equation. I could never get a student to solve the partial difference equation, so I had to finally have to do it myself. <laughs> Rocky planets all have a really big iron core. 
<clears throat> the moon has almost no iron in it. It's got really small iron crystals. They don't know how that happened. What they think was that two of these rocky planets slammed together. Their iron core stuck and then it slung off enough dirt and that dirt later coalesced into the moon. This is Robin Cannon. She's the lead in the world in this research. And so I had a group of students want to do this. So here's our work. So this is my first set of students. And here's their simulation. They did this in one semester. They went to a supercomputer, figured out how to make a supercomputer, learn C, learn CUDA, and built this model in one semester. And she knows it looks pretty much like Canada, so she's leading the world right now. Everybody, um, uh, they make a slam that makes this disc of debris around, but they never had the disc of debris that actually turned into a moon. And they cite this paper from the University of Tokyo that took a disc and turned it into a moon, so they want to do that too, so here's a simulation on that one. And they get a moon when we go on. Um, the, the next group of students, uh, we didn't like them, it's a two part model. You have one model that slammed and made the disc, and another model that took the disc and made a moon out of it. That was kind of unrealistic because you got different parameters. We want to do it in one model. And so here's the next set of students who worked on that, and here's their results. They were online the beginning, I got to fly. They got a perfect size moon uh, more than just the right spot with that. But uh, if you notice all of the simulations, the stuff that makes the moon came from just one of the impactors. It didn't come from both of them. We got dirt from the moon and we got dirt from the earth. And you compare the two, they're exactly the same isotopically. Okay, so that couldn't have happened if the thing that made the moon was a different body than what made the Earth. So they had to fix that hole. So here's what Dr. Cannon did. She slammed two equal sized bodies together and you notice the disc of debris now is made from both, both impactors. So the dirt on the bottom of Earth and the dirt on the moon will be the same, okay? And in Harvard's getting the picture, they slammed it with a smaller impactor in hopes of throwing enough dirt from the Earth out here that the moon was made mostly from dirt from the Earth. And here's uh, our come back to that one. And you have to watch it long enough. They got a uh, nice size moon. If you notice, this is the moon. It's made from yellow cheese and green cheese. Exactly a 50 50 ratio. Okay. And now, all of the simulations that were done, ours, Harvard's, and uh, Canada's, we had about twice as much angular momentum that you're supposed to have is what the Earth-Moon system has at present. So what Harvard said was um, there's this thing called um, evection resonance between the moon and the sun, which can pull out the excess angular momentum. So that's what Harvard says our model is okay. We're just going to do this thing and pull it out. The Royal Society in London called meeting that summer, they basically said yes on what Harvard said. He said, we don't think that's a viable mechanism and go back to the drawing boards and start over. This is the cover of nature. So there's an excess student who was working on that problem. Okay, we did some um, different initial conditions, spun them different ways and things, and we got this. <laughs> we got almost everything that we wanted to answer all the questions and a little bit off. So we <clears throat> went back to the work and what we did, we, 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 we tilt them off a little bit. We want to get some more stuff into orbit. And so here's their um, final. And if you watch it long enough, here's what you'll end up with. We got a perfect size moon, perfect peak with an uh, angle momentum we're spot on. We're like 0.01% off angle momentum. The moon is made up of um, about 50 50 from both impactors. And here's the real this is what people in the world are trying to get these three. We got those three, and we're getting those three. These are other open questions on the problem. Those just naturally fell into place. So we answered seven questions on it. Um, and we're the only people in the world that I know have gotten this. Okay. So have we done everything? Well, not exactly. There's this big fire thing in the, in the, in the solar system, we, nobody's even taken a uh, look at it. It's 99% of the mass of the solar system. We figured 
can't have a really good model if you exclude 99% of what's out there. And so um, this study students wanted to take a model, stick the sun in, and see what happens. They think that these planets that hit, they came with, from within the asteroid belt. So they want to take our initial conditions, add the sun to it, and see where they came from. And so what they did, they took our initial conditions, ran it backwards with the sun in, and saw where it came from. So here's what happened. This is where the planets came from the slam. Here's the asteroid belt. So it came from well within the asteroid belt. So the answer to that question is. Oh, okay, so now we go. So it's um, binary, this binary star group. So here's all the people working on binary star. Um, Mason's just picked it up and working with Dr. Gary um, over in engineering. Uh, let's see what I got. So on binary stars, what happened is a, a regular star like the sun, as it gets old, we got four and a half, four billion years to go. As it gets old, all the, the hydrogen in its core will turn into helium. Once that happens, the core will start shrinking and it gets hot enough, it'll start fusing hydrogen outside the core, it's called um, core fusion. And that will get like really hot and it'll start expanding. And our sun will expand 100 times bigger than it is and it'll engulf the Earth. And what will happen if you have a pair of stars together, it'll leach mass across this L1 point right here, the L1 branch point. And so we want to see if we can model that. So, <clears throat> Here's the first series model. This is um, a, a, a binary star system, and this could be um, a night sequence star like the sun as it's getting older, and it's going to start growing and turn into a red giant. And this thing is uh, it's a little red dot. Uh, that could be like a white dwarf, it could be a black hole, so it's something like your sun in a black hole here. Is going to do here is we're going to we got to take a it's 2D 
move the cities and turn it to a one lead path. So what he's going to do is going to take this inner circle, blow it up, and push the cities out to a ring, and that ring will be your path. Thank <laughs> you. 